temperatures across the Arctic have been increasing at a rate that is about twice the global average, causing a record heat wave in Siberia. This year, a small remote town above the Arctic Circle in the Russian region of Yakutia saw temperatures that were nearly 20 degrees higher than the average. Scientists now fear that the heat is causing the permafrost to thaw, spelling catastrophe for both the environment and for the people who live there. DW's Emily Sherwin reports from Verhoyansk. You can see the heat shimmer, even now, at the end of summer. A few weeks ago, Verkhoyansk set a new record, 38 degrees Celsius. That's the highest temperature ever recorded within the Arctic Circle. People here are usually proud of a different extreme. Their town is one of two places that claim to be the coldest on Earth. We're used to the cold. People here can't handle that sort of heat. Everyone bought electric fans. They were totally sold out here. People had ice cream and cold drinks. We aren't prepared for these conditions. We swam and worked. It was fine. Even in the winter when it's minus 60 degrees centigrade here, we eat ice cream. So working when it was 38 degrees wasn't a problem either. The climate is changing every year and the ice is slowly melting. People say the winters have gotten a bit warmer and the summer has moved by a whole month. It's longer now. The buildings in Verkhoyansk are on stilts, designed to drive down into the permafrost and give them a solid base. The pillars also keep the houses raised so they don't melt the ground underneath but rising temperatures could threaten the very foundations of this town. Because the permafrost is melting, houses here could collapse because they're built on pillars. Our public utilities are built on supports which have their foundations in the ground. If they move, there could be accidents. There will be all sorts of problems if global warming intensifies. Russia's Arctic has already felt the effects of unstable foundations. In late May, a fuel reservoir near Norilsk collapsed, and 21,000 tons of diesel spilled into surrounding rivers and subsoil. The Russian metals company in charge said the thawing permafrost was to blame. Scientists hope the environmental catastrophe in Norilsk will be a wake-up call for authorities. Until this happened, no one paid attention to the issue of permafrost. The first thing that contributes to its thaw is the climate and the summer temperatures. The sum of summer temperatures here in central Yakutia, so in the Taiga forest, has increased by 10 to 12 percent since the year 2000. This year's summer may have been a novelty for people in Verkhoyansk, but it could spell an unstable future for Russia's Arctic. Let's get some analysis on this story now. We have Thomas Smith with us. He's an environmental scientist from the London School of Economics. Thomas, thank you for joining us. We're talking about a place that is usually known for some of the coldest temperatures in the world. Why are we seeing such record high temperatures in Siberia? Well, it's not unusual for the Arctic to have a warm summer, um, but some parts of the Arctic, Arctic, particularly eastern Siberia, have experienced consistently above average and extreme temperatures since the winter, so the winter, spring and summer this year. And the summer's record-breaking temperatures have been due to a combination of a regional heat wave, so weather-related, but also caused by a longer-lasting um, uh, climate change, which has been driving temperatures in the Arctic higher and at a faster rate than anywhere else in the world. And that has sparked wildfires. Tell us more about that and what effects these wildfires have had on the region. Both in 2019 and 2020, we've seen widespread fires and uh, on a larger scale than we've seen in the satellite record dating back to 2003. Uh, the most obvious impact of the wildfires has been widespread smoke pollution, uh, leading to some of the worst air quality readings on the planet, as well as carbon emissions. Um, there are some longer term impacts to these fires, but we're yet to see those. The fires have been burning in forests, which should usually have a fire maybe once every 80 years or so. But some of these places, we're now knowing that these fires are happening much more frequent than this. And that might lead to permanent changes in the ecosystem, widespread replacement of the forest by shrublands or grasslands, potentially. To the north, the fires have been affecting the, the tundra. 
And we're really just beginning to understand what the impact of fires are on this very remote um, ecosystem. If we look at the region on the whole, Thomas, we mentioned this astonishing development that the temperatures across the Arctic as a whole have been increasing twice as fast as the rest of the world. What are the consequences of that for the global climate? Well, uh, importantly, we've got the permanently frozen ground, the permafrost that was mentioned in your report. Now, this contains ancient carbon-rich soils, um, which have been drying this year and last year and burning in this year's fires, releasing large quantities of carbon dioxide, and that will drive uh, climate change. Just the drying of the soil, even without a fire, can release gases like carbon dioxide and methane. So as that permafrost melts, the, the land can sink as well. And we've seen that um, as a really important um, effect of this uh, uh, thawing out of the permafrost in some of the uh, things that you mentioned in your reports. Uh, there was a major oil spill in Siberia, and that's going to have uh, you know, widespread regional impacts. OK, so your message to authorities, what do you think needs to happen now to mitigate all of these effects? Well, at a local scale, we, we don't really understand what is causing the, the ignitions of many of these fires. It's often related to humans, and we do need to work together to reduce ignitions, particularly during these heat waves, which are becoming more and more common um, in these regions of Siberia. As far as the longer term warming is concerned, our only hope is concerted action to mitigate rising greenhouse gas concentrations in our atmosphere. However, whatever we do now to slow down climate change, uh, the impacts are only going to be felt in a number of decades. The warming in the Arctic will continue for now and we'll have to be dealing with the consequences as a result of greenhouse gas emissions over the past century. Thomas Smith from the London School of Economics. Great to have you with us. Thank you.